Um, my name is Benjamin Albert, and um, I'm the uh, head of uh, um, services content consulting at FVA, and um, I'm responsible for everything which has something to do with our customers. Um, so I'm responsible for uh, the sales and uh, also the software support. And I'm happy to show you uh, the FEA workbench and what you can do with it today. Um, before we start, I would like to know um, whether you know the FEA workbench by your own experience or if you're planning to, uh, to purchase the FEA workbench. Therefore, we have um, a short question for you. And um, I would like to give you a couple of seconds to, to answer whether you know it by your own, if you have it for your daily work. And um, looks like almost everyone has voted and um, The majority of you have the FAA workbench. Um, and uh, almost 30 or more than 30% are planning to buy the FAA workbench. That's great to hear. Um, so I would like to start um, by showing you what the FVA is, where the FAA workbench comes from, and um, how we could uh, how you could benefit uh, from the FVA workbench the FVA is far and foremost uh, the research association for drive technology in germany uh, the research association uh, collaborates with le the leading universities for drive technology and initiates with um, the funding they collect uh, with the membership fees they initiate um, high quality research in the drive technology together with the expert community and uh, the leading universities. The FVA has um, or uh, will take the research results and bring them um, to the engineers in such a way that we transfer the knowledge into a software and make it applicable. So uh, we are working together with the expert community of the FVA, the Research Association, and together with our user community and the leading universities to, uh, to make the FVA Workbench a great and successful product. Besides the FVA Workbench, um, we have a um, couple of other products and services. Well, there's the software as well. Um, we do uh, services like uh, customizing the FAA workbench for, uh, for your needs, um, some calculation services if you don't have a certain module um, but would like to have the results for that. Um, we do trainings, uh, so if you have the need for um, developing yourself into a new field, um, we could certainly help you with uh, our trainings. And also, um, we have uh, great conferences. Uh, last year, we did the Beering World, which was hugely successful. Also, um, annually, we have the uh, E-Mobility Congress, a international congress for uh, electric mobility. Um, and we, we had... Uh, attendees like we've never had before. So together with the research and uh, transferring the knowledge into an efficient program, um, you have a tool at hand which is very precise and makes it possible for you to, uh, to design your gears in such a way that they are very efficient and make it very easy for you to design them. 
if you would be interested in um, having a contact directly to us and you are not located in Germany where the, uh, the contact is very simple um, by phone or by email, um, then we have sales partners in the US, in Chicago and also in Sochi, China. Um, they would be happy to, um, to help you with all your questions. The development of the FAA workbench takes place in Munich and Dresden. There we have our software development departments. And um, in Frankfurt, near the Research Association, um, there will, there's our headquarters. Uh, also in Aachen, Germany, there is the uh, head department for our US technical sales. In Austria, uh, there is also a technical sales uh, department um, for the, the whole European market. Here, this is a uh, this is are some of our customers. Um, you can see that uh, they are very big and successful um, companies, and um, that's not all of it. We have many, many more. Um, but those are the companies who um, wanted to see their logo on a slide. Our trainings are uh, divided in three uh, parts. There are basic trainings. Um, we could do them virtually since this year, but we do them also on location. So if you have a couple of uh, interestees at your site, um, we would gladly come to you and uh, conduct the training on your site. Uh, the second would be an advanced training. Uh, there we go into the details and um, look how uh, the, the algorithms, for example, work, how the, uh, the failure modes work. And then we have the expert trainings. The expert trainings, um, they are conducted uh, together with our um, research partners. Um, so here we have the best experts for the expert trainings. Like I said before, uh, this is a broad overview over our conferences. The Bearing World was last year. We do this every other year. Emotive is an annual congress. I would be happy to see you uh, in uh, later this year um, for the Emotive Congress. Uh, the FEA annual conference, as it says, an annual conference. Um, we will attend it uh, this year also, and I would be happy to see you there. Uh, the GetLoop uh, conference, I think this uh, should be this year, but um, for more information on the uh, conferences, please visit uh, our website. Uh, there you will find all the current uh, information on all the conferences. Um, as one example for our conferences, uh, we conducted the virtual battery uh, product uh, uh, exhibition um, with over 2,300 participants uh, early last year, the beginning of um, Corona lockdown, and uh, this was a huge success. So if you would be interested in um, making a new conference together with us, um, we would happy to help you. So now let's talk about the FEA workbench and what the FEA workbench is capable of. The FEA workbench, um, as I said, uh, is derived from the research um, and this makes it uh, that uh, you could improve your product quality with it. So it allows you to look very deeply into your gears, into your gearbox, analyze um, various different, um, under various different contexts, and uh, you could look uh, into the, de uh, the details of your bearings, of your gears, um, how the housing is deflected. And this makes it possible that you um, increase your product uh, quality. If you have the ability to look into the details, you need to have the technical skills to do, the, to do so. 
and the FAA workbench helps to do that. Um, we have a, um, a context-sensitive help system. So if you cl click on an input value, you could read uh, all of the necessary information on this um, uh, subject in our context-sensitive help. Um, besides that, we have linked to the research results uh, in Temis. Temis is the um, uh, the database in which all the research results from the FVA are put down. Um, and so you have the, uh, the optimal um, point for your research uh, if you need to know more about one calculation. Due to the very efficient uh, algorithms in the FAA workbench, the FAA workbench saves you time. Um, it is very simple to calculate the uh, calculate your gearbox, um, and you don't need much time to build up the, your model. Um, we are supporting you in building up the model, so don't you don't uh, do false inputs. Uh, we check all the inputs for um, typos, for example, and uh, inform our, uh, our users if we think that there might be something wrong. And thus, uh, if it saves time, it saves you also money. So what does the FEA Workbench do? Um, we're sure that we are the uh, greatest collection of um, calculations um, and standard calculations for gears. And this is just a a uh, short overview over the standard calculation for spur gears. Um, I don't want to read them all, but uh, that you have seen what is possible. We're mainly focusing uh, our work on um, the gear system calculation. And um, the gear system calculation is a calculation where we um, throw all the, the uh, various effects into one um, matrix, solve the matrix, the stiffness matrix, and get all the forces, we get all the deflections, and especially within the gearing, um, we get the uh, load distribution across the width of the flank and across the height of the flank. And with this information, it allows us to give you an accurate reading for your pressure distribution, and it allows you to modify your gears in such a way that you have an even load distribution. As I said, you could uh, take the uh, gear modifications into account and uh, lay them, uh, do a design of that. And here I have brought you a, um, a quick demonstration on what the, the torque uh, does with your gearbox. Below, uh, at the, the picture below, you can see the uh, deformation of the gears. And especially here, I don't know whether you recognized it, um, there's a, a shaft and shaft um, support. And thus, the, uh, the input shaft deflects very heavily. But also, if you look at the uh, bigger gear, at the output, you could see that uh, the shaft deflection um, leads to a uneven load distribution and an uneven pressure distribution, basically for all different load stages. So uh, what do we take into consideration for the um, gear system analysis? It's so of course the shafts, they're mainly uh, Timoshenko beams, but um, you also have the option on using a finite element uh, model for the shafts. The rolling bearings, um, they are a couple of Hertz and contacts. You could also take plane bearings into consideration. Uh, for example, if you have very fast rotating applications, um, or if you need a higher amount of dampening. 
Of course, uh, the cylindrical and bevel gear stages are taken into consideration. You could also take uh, helical gears and warm gear stages uh, into your gearbox. Um, shaft hub connections could be calculated. Of course, as we have seen, the gearbox housing, planet carriers, and uh, couplings. Besides that, we calculate the micro pitting and temperature distribution across the flank here. For example, at the left hand side, you see the flash temperature uh, across the bearing, uh, across the flank. And uh, you could calculate a, a micro pitting safety factor. And this is a very common uh, picture, what you might have seen, that at the beginning of uh, the mesh, the tooth root, um, there is a higher um, chance for micro pittings. And you could see it here that um, there are also higher uh, temperatures. With the temperatures, you could also calculate the efficiency um, and uh, the, um, the sump temperature for your, for your uh, lubricant. Um, could also take into account the uh, the losses in the bearings uh, to various degrees with various algorithms. Um, so, uh, and this is all based on research of the uh, conducted in in FVA sixty nine. Um, so, all the information displayed here um, they're based on um, actual uh, test bench results. Especially for um, fast turning gears, uh, the noise vibration harshness uh, is, um, is very important. Um, this calculation is derived from the load distribution, the 3D load distribution. We are calculating uh, the transmission error across um, uh, the mesh. And from the transmission error, you could also calculate the spectrum of the transmission error. Um, besides that, you could also calculate the, um, the varying uh, stiffness in your mesh and um, uh, the meshing forces, the changing uh, change of meshing forces. Um, in this example, you could see the, the pressure distribution at the lower uh, left-hand side. And I applied a, um, modif a gear modification to get rid of the... Um, the load spikes at the beginning and end of the mesh. And you could also uh, look at the transmission area and you could see that uh, the total uh, fluctuation range decreases from 2.3 microns to 1.7 micron. And this is only due to uh, the uh, spikes, uh, load spikes at the beginning and the end of the mesh. You could calculate uh, um, the transmission error over a, a broad range of torques. Um, for example, in this instance, I uh, compared um, a, a modified gear with a non-modified gear for various torques from 20% um, load to 140% um, load. You could see that the, a non-modified gear has a steep increase in the transmission error for higher torques, whereas um, the modified gear has a minimum um, at uh, the at 100 percent. So this is my design point, and um, after the, the design point, uh, it also starts to get. Um, worse with uh, the noise vibration harshness. However, um, you could see that uh, in total, the whole line is below um, the uh, non-modified gear. So gear modifications work for the transmission error. Comparing the transmission error with uh, the local loss factor, um, this is what I, I plotted here. The local loss factor looks at, uh, especially, uh, especially at uh, the slip in the gear. And for this calculation, um, 
I uh, cut away the teeth um, right above the um, the pitch circle and increased it uh, step by step. And you could see that the total contact ratio is increasing. Um, and with the increasing total contact ratio, the transmission error decreases. Also, uh, the loss factor increases. And this is very uh, typical because um, if you have a higher total contact ratio, you will also have higher slip uh, at the beginning and end of your gears. And this uh, leads to higher losses in your gear. However, uh, the, the more contact ratio you have, um, the lower your transmission error is because uh, the stiffness um, is evening out. I also would like to draw your attention to um, the local minimum right around the uh, the two uh, total contact ratio of two. Um, so if you have an even number for the total contact ratio, you will get a minimum for your uh, noise vibration harshness. Besides that, you could also look at uh, the eigenvalues for your calculation. Um, this is a typical Campbell diagram. Um, here you could see it in horizontal lines um, all the eigenfrequencies, the natural frequencies of your uh, gears in lateral, rotational, axial, and mixed. And um, the diagonal lines. Those are the meshing frequencies. And if you look at uh, the greenish area here, this is the operating area, the expected operating area. And you will find uh, cross sections with the greenish area and uh, your meshing frequencies. And then these frequencies, we check whether the, um, um, the eigenfrequency um, is in, um, in phase or against the phase of, of your mesh. And if it's in phase, we don't expect it to be a critical point. However, is it uh, if it rotates against each, each other, this might be a very critical point and will lead to failure. You also have the possibility on calculating your bearings. Um, and there you have various uh, different options on calculating your bearings. Of course, you have uh, various uh, life uh, calculations. For example, there's the Dean uh, 26281. Um, there you could uh, consider the gear, uh, the, the bearing, um, the bearing design. Um, the width of, of your rollers, uh, also the profile of your rollers. You could calculate um, the slip uh, for um, your um, ball bearings. Um, if you have uh, a roller bearing, um, you could calculate uh, the hash and contact stress across the width. Here you could see um, as a line, each and every roller. And uh, at the Z axis, you have the uh, hatch and stress um, for the inner and the outer ring. And for the highest loaded uh, roller, you will find also um, the stress along the width of the roller. This is all possible with uh, the calculation according to DIN uh, 26281. Um, besides that, there are various calculations. For example, uh, you could calculate the uh, viscosity ratio according to FEA 418. Uh, this allows you to give uh, to um, have a deeper insight into your viscosity ratio and um, therefore your mixed lubrication. Um, if you would be interested in the losses of your bearing, um, there's the uh, possibility to calculate according to FPA 701. Um, this is a, um, a method to calculate uh, the bearing losses um, 
looking at the pressure uh, and the load distribution in your bearing and the local um, contacts. Describing the lo local contacts, you have the, uh, very precise um, calculations of your losses here. However, um, we have a rule of thumb uh, for your for our bearing calculations. Um, we only do the calculations we could do with efficient accuracy, meaning if we don't have the exact geometry for the bearing, um, we are only calculating according to uh, the catalog and the ISO 281, so the nominal rating life. However, if you input uh, the um, the exact bearing geometry, uh, there's also the possibility to do all the refined uh, calculations uh, shown above. Um, for this case, for this example, I brought uh, a calculation um, of a simple um, um, shaft. And here you, on the left-hand side, you can see the uh, bending line. And on the right-hand side, I have the pressure distribution um, in this roller bearing. And you could see that with increasing load, there is a higher tilting of um, your shaft. And this is due to the fact that the, uh, the, row, uh, the ball bearing here has a lower stiffness. And uh, as itself, uh, the shaft is rather, uh, rather big and rather stiff. And the uh, bearing stiffness is lower than the shaft stiffness. So you don't have a a huge bending of your shaft, however, you have a tilting of your, your shaft. And this tilting is displayed here in the pressure distribution, and you could see um, that you have a an edge pressure, uh, an edge pressure here, or at least an uneven pressure distribution. As I said in uh, in the beginning, there's also the possibility to calculate uh, your is with plane bearings. Um, for the plane bearing calculation, we have a very advanced calculation method where we are um, looking at the Reynolds, the Reynolds uh, differential equation um, and solving the flow within the bearing. And this, uh, here on the left-hand side, you can see the pressure distribution in an uh, offset half bearing uh, for the center line. Um, here on the right hand side, you could see the pressure distribution as a 3D image. Um, and below that, you could see the temperature distribution. The temperature distribution, um, the temperature distribution is calculated from the friction in uh, the bearing. And um, the friction of the, uh, in the bearing, increases the temperature in the bearing. And with the increased temperature of the bearing, uh, you reduce locally um, the uh, film thickness. And uh, therefore, you would need an increased pressure to uh, work against that. And also, um, you will, will change uh, the geometry of your bearing because uh, or due to um, uh, thermal expansion of shaft and uh, bearing shell. So all these various uh, effects could be taken into consideration for uh, the plane bearing calculation. A huge point in the FEA workbench is the bevel gear uh, calculation. Um, the bevel gear calculation starts with a simulation of um, the manufacturing process. Um, therefore, you would need to have a, um, a design file for, for your uh, manufacturing machine, like uh, the, the um, Klingenberg neutral data format. And with uh, those data, you could go into the calculation and uh, perform um, a bevel gear calculation within the gear system calculation. 
Again, a uh, brief overview about uh, for the um, available calculations according to various standards. And you can see there are also there are load carrying calculations. There are calculations uh, for wear, uh, for scuffing, for micro pitting, the risk of uh, flank breakage. And um, you could also see that uh, some of them or most of them are based on um, research of the FVA, uh, indicated by this FVA number. Um, one special feature of the um, uh, bevel gear calculation is the contact pattern um, measurement. Um, this is just an excerpt of that. You could see that uh, we have printed the uh, contact pattern load free and uh, under load. And with these measurements, you could find them in a table. And with this measurement, you could go, uh, go down to your workshop, look at your bevel gears, and um, this helps you to uh, set up your bevel gears uh, in such a way that you this matches uh, your design. Besides that, you also have the possible possibility for uh, various calculations. Um, the easiest one uh, is, or the thing I uh, I understand, and that's that's the um, the point I, I would like to go uh, is uh, the pressure distribution and also the tooth root stress. Uh, there are also various other calculations. Um, where you could uh, input your load spectrum, uh, where you could calculate uh, the uh, the damage accumulated locally uh, on your flank. But um, this is very high expert knowledge and um, I don't feel comfortable to, to show it to you and explain it to you. So there's that. Um, also, we have uh, some uh, special gear types like warm gears where you could calculate the pressure distribution, the cap height, also uh, the wear occurring in your uh, warm gear. And also you could calculate according to various standards and uh, to various FVA research projects. Um, many of our customers know that uh, a lighter uh, a gearbox is always a better gearbox. So um, we see a clear trend to lighter housings, uh, lighter planet carriers. We see that um, the uh, gear bodies are getting uh, lighter and slimmer. And um, all that leads to the point that uh, those geometries are not uh, calculatable with um, with normal uh, algorithmic uh, uh, with, with normal um, calculations, and there we need to have uh, the finite element calculations uh, to be able to take uh, those geometry into consideration. And we do it uh, with um, with our one click uh, FEM. We are mostly using um, uh, reduced stiffness matrices for uh, the, uh, the housing and the planet carrier, for example, also for the shafts, especially for uh, the wheel body calculations, we're using the uh, 3D FAM calculations. Um, and here you can take, uh, take it into the consideration, um, for example, for, especially for the plant carriers, it's uh, rather important to take uh, take it into consideration to know um, on how much you need to increase or decrease your gear modification. Um, one thing um, about the shafts, um, we have on our homepage uh, a, a tag blog uh, where we explained how uh, the FEM shafts benefit, or how uh, a, a FEM shaft calculation, uh, in, under what circumstances a FEM calculation for the shaft is necessary, especially if you have 
uh, a huge increase in diameter. Um, for this instance displayed here, uh, it most certainly wouldn't be necessary. But if you have a huge increase in diameter for your shaft, you most certainly will have differences um, in the calculation between the FEM and the Timoshenko beam normally used in our gear system calculation. Exactly that, uh, I, I said all that. Um, and the last feature I would like to, uh, to show to you is the reporting feature. The reporting feature um, is, I think, the, the, one of the best features we have in the FVA workbench um, because we accepted the fact that if we uh, provide a, um, a report with fixed um, tables and fixed graphs, um, those tables are only valid for one academic um, subject and probably for your daily business it won't be suitable or it won't be perfectly suitable. So uh, we, we invented a report template system uh, that you could modify without any uh, knowledge uh, for um, programming or any programming skills. You could apply your report template on any gearbox model that you have calculated, and you will get always the same report. And with this system, it allows you to, um, to design your reports that fit your needs the best. For example, you could have a report template uh, for your uh, internal documentation. This might have all the necessary data in it. Um, you could have a second report template for your boss uh, with all the uh, neat graphs and pictures. And you could have a reduced template report um, for uh, your customer that you could show, uh, show him at your meetings. And this looks something like this. Um, it's an HTML file where you could uh, start your animations, um, could zoom in and analyze your results. For example, here in, with the load distribution, you could uh, hover over the data and uh, read the data directly uh, from um, the mouse marker. Um, one special thing, um, because, or, we, we choose the, the HTML format uh, is um, because every system, to our knowledge, has an HTML browser. So you could save uh, the report file um, and you could send the report file to your customer, to your uh, manager, or to your colleague. And they don't need to have the FAA workbench running on the machine to have all the functionality displayed here but uh, they could open it in their browser and um, could start working with the, um, the report you sent them. And there's also one uh, special thing um, I would like to show you. Um, and here I have the, the FA workbench with a calculation uh, running. Um, and I wanted to, to draw your attention to this uh, feature at the bottom left corner. Um, here you have the report manager. And all the calculations will go into um, a model snapshot, what we call the model, uh, a model snapshot. You could um, save the model, save the, the snapshot in the model. And if you... Um, increase the torque, for example, or decrease it. Um, let's increase it by 10%. Uh, I'm multiplying it by with 1.1. 1 .1. um, I rerun the calculation. And you could see that a new model, model snapshot will occur. Um, I'm going to rename the model snapshot. 
I'm calling that uh, 110% torque and this is 100% torque and um, now I would like I most certainly would like to know what changed um, so I'm setting the 100% as a reference and um, will compare with the reference. And now the FA Workbench is compiling a um, comparison uh, report. As a basis, is, it takes the, um, the report, um, uh, set it in, in the preferences. And uh, now I have the, re uh, the report side by side. And I will have for example, I took the wrong report. Compare with reference the 110. So you might have seen, um, I, I just wondered why there are no differences, and this is because I I took the 100% torque and the 100% torque to compare. Well, that would be strange if there would be differences between there. Okay, um, now I'm compiling a report between the 100 and 100%, uh, 110% torque. Now it, you can see that we have differences in the torque. We have differences, differences in the efficiency. And if we scroll down um, for the deformation, you could see that the 110% torque um, has a different load distribution than uh, the 100% torque. And thus, you, it also has a different uh, uh, pressure distribution. For example, uh, you, can, you can see the pressure distribution here in this 3D image, or in this case, it is the load distribution. The pressure distribution is below that. Um, one other thing is uh, that you could save the model snapshots in uh, your model. Um, this helps you, especially with project documentation. So I could save the file right now and come back later. Um, if I'm doing my documentation, um, it doesn't matter. I could apply all my um, uh, report templates uh, onto these model snapshots on these uh, calculation results. And whenever a uh, customer needs changes in the reports, I can do the changes in my uh, uh, template, apply the template onto my research results, and uh, hand out my uh, reports to the customer. Um, this gets rid of the uh, the age-old question: uh, how you get uh, the, or that you you have to make sure that you save all the various um, calculations. Um, and if you lost a, a calculation um, with this uh, model snapshots, it's very easy to uh, get at least the results very easily. For more information on the fe uh, on the features, um, you're happy to to look at the FVA minus service DE, and under the point software and features, you, you will find all the features described today, and many more. Also, if you have any questions um, after the meeting, you're happy to. Or I would be happy if you um, get in touch with me and um, would be happy to uh, to help you with your questions. Um, finally, I would like to talk about uh, the licensing structure. This is always a, uh, a huge question um, because the, the FAA Workbench uh, has three editions, a model edition, extended edition and, and advanced edition. 
The editions uh, have a standard package, um, which is designed for the for the modular edition. It is uh, designed in such a way that um, entry level engineers and uh, project engineers could work with it. Extended edition is um, for designers um, who want to to calculate uh, load carrying capacity and gear geometry but also uh, look at um, bearing rating life, for example. Um, and the advanced edition is for experts who want to, to know all the, uh, all the bits of the gearbox and dive very deeply into um, all the details of your gearbox design. All these editions are available as client license and the floating license. The client license is hardware bound, install it on one hardware, and uh, so you have your personal license. Uh, the floating license is hardware independent. You could, cut, you, know, you could um, install the FAA workbench on uh, each computer in your uh, company, um, use it parallel as much licenses as you have, obviously, um, so it makes it very flexible for using it within a team. Um, and there you have uh, the basic functionality. Of course, the modular edition has a, um, very few basic functionalities. Uh, the extended edition has a huge variety of basic functionalities and you always could upgrade uh, the basic functionalities with optional functionalities. Um, and with that, you could customize the workbench in such a way that it fits your needs perfectly. With that, um, I'm finished with my presentation. Um, I would like to uh, draw your attention also to uh, our social media. Um, if you, in, on LinkedIn, we are posting regularly um, interesting bits from the FAA workbench and also uh, information on our seminars. So if you are interested in our seminars, uh, please also uh, visit LinkedIn and our uh, newsletter if you haven't subscribed there. Um, that's it with my presentation and I would be happy to uh, have a look at your questions. And if you would like to post your questions at the questions tab, I haven't seen questions yet. So, if there are no questions, um, you will find my contact details uh, on uh, our homepage. Um, please feel free to contact me by email. You also could call me. Ah, now there there are some questions. Uh, was the webinar recorded anywhere uh, to see it again? Yes, the webinar was recorded and will be available on our homepage. Uh, have you ever done a comparison between just a simple, for example, between uh, KSoft and your software? Um, we don't have other softwares. Um, however, we get uh, get some calc uh, calculation examples from uh, our customers. They have their um they have uh, other calculation tools of course and um for the standard calculations they fit perfectly um however uh, if you're looking at um 
the details, for example, the noise vibration harshness, um, you could see that they, they do. Um, the results are diverging. Uh, they are not, not the same. Um, this might have something to do with uh, the different um, models, um, the, the mechanical models playing behind uh, the various calculations in, in other softwares. Okay, um, do you need an external tool to create a FEM uh, shaft and housing? Can cut parts directly be loaded into the FAA workbench use, uh, to use them as FEM parts? Uh, thank you for that excellent question. Um, you could load CAD parts into the FVA workbench. Um, we have a, a FEM measure within the workbench available. And um, if you have licensed that option, you could use it. Uh, if you have a FEM tool at hand, for example, ANSYS or Abacus, you could load uh, the files into the FVA workbench um, and use them. So you could have it both ways, uh, whatever fits your needs the best. Okay. Uh, okay, next question is going into to the detail. Um, in previous versions, where uh, you were allowing the shaft diameters over the root diameter of the tooth, are you considering this uh, to allow this again? Um, at the moment, uh, we don't consider to allow this again um, because we have realized if we um, if we have a shaft diameter uh, higher than the tooth root diameter. Um, this will result in negative uh, stiffness entries in our stiffness matrix, and negative stiffness entries in our stiffness matrix um, will lead to at least strange results. Um, what about comparison of uh, workbench software and st standalone uh, FVA software? Um, at the moment, there is a, a research, research project uh, going on to calculate uh, to um, uh, compare the FBA workbench results with the FBA uh, standalone kernel uh, recore, and um, there are some differences um, to be worked out, uh, but for the uh, for the, the standard value, values, uh, pressure distribution, load distribution, and 2D load distribution, um, they are basically the same. Is there an interface between FAA Workbench and CAD softwares? Um, you could uh, import CAD files into the FAA Workbench as native CAD files um, for the the uh, Supported CAD files, please have a look at our module description. Um, they, are, uh, they are described there. Um, as I said, with uh, the, the mesh, uh, the, the meshing tool, um, you could import uh, step files. And uh, there are also export interfaces, so you could export your model, for example, as uh, native CAD files. Um, if you have a Annex, for example, or a Creole, uh, you could export it uh, as well. So I don't see any further questions. Um, time's also uh, almost up. So. If there are any more questions, I would be happy to answer them. Um, if questions occur after the presentation, I would be happy to uh, to answer them by mail. Um, and if I have missed a, a questions uh, a question, 
I'm very sorry, and I will come to it back to you later. Okay, then thank you, have a nice day, and uh, as uh, um, it's very important these days, stay healthy, stay safe, and I would be happy to see you next time. Bye-bye.